Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Omnipotent Growth with Cow. We have uh, a great guest today, our friend Todor. Uh, we will introduce him in a minute. The topic for today is what are the top leadership qualities for the different levels in an organization? We have the per perfect man for this topic. And now I will uh, give the word to Stefan for the introduction. Uh, thanks, Cal. It's an honor to present Thor. He was one of the very few people in our MBA cohort uh, that I was able to discuss corporate finance with. <laughs> uh, so as you can imagine, he has an extensive background in finance. Uh, Thor kicked off his career uh, in the insurance business as an M&A, this is mergers and acquisitions consultant in the Netherlands. Uh, then he was a head of planning and reporting of a mid-sized Russian insurance company, CFO of a Romanian pension and insurance company, and then finance director of a UK-owned consumer financing firm in Bulgaria. Now, he's a program director of a Belgian-owned share service center in Varna. Welcome, Tor. Nice to have you here. Thank Do you. I miss something? <laughs> 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 Stefan, you almost have it all, so thank you for having me, guys, uh, on the show. I'm, I'm very glad to, to be here. Um, yeah, the only thing is uh, I had a short stint of a GM of another financial institution company, mm. so yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it all. So I'll be happy to share some of that uh, insights with you. Yeah. Great. So we can jump right on. Uh, our first question will be: As you were in almost every ladder of the of the corporate world, um, you are well aware of uh, how leadership qualities can affect uh, every position along the way to the top. So, what are the special qualities that a leader needs uh, in the different levels? Yeah, no, that is true. I have uh, 16 years basically of, of, uh, of experience behind my back. And indeed, it is very true that uh, depending on a different level, I think you need different types of, of qualities uh, in, uh, when you're leading a team as opposed to when you're leading discussions at the board level. Mm. So um, uh, clearly, and that's probably not going to be new to some of the listeners and viewers, um, uh, when, you, when you start climbing up the corporate ladder, you need more of the hard skills. So you really need to have the, you know, the technical skills. You have to know what, you, what you're talking about mm -hmm. in order to involve the people that are sitting around you in the team. As you grow up and up, you need to gain more of the so-called so soft skills. Huh? Mm. And then eventually, I believe these days, the, the, the really the key word of, of being successful in leadership roles at a board level is really emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. and the different yeah. styles of leadership that uh, that you have. Huh? So I think um, I think indeed different different qualities uh, are required. Um, I've been thinking when preparing for today's uh, show guys um, and, and one of the things that that is quite important is you actually don't um, I don't believe that that there are born leaders you know we've heard that way too often you're a born leader. I personally don't believe in that. I think I think mm -hmm. leaders uh, you know, they're born people with qualities to become good leaders. But actually leadership is something that you can learn to do. Eh? Mm -hmm. And it needs experience. Uh, I, I, I don't believe that, you know, you can really be a, a very successful leader at the age of 20, you know. Yeah. So it, it's really age related, but also sort of experience related. And the very important thing as you climb up at different roles is, is to really develop those so soft skills and gain that, that emotional intelligence. That would help you immensely yeah? mm -hmm. to be a successful leader at the at at higher levels, and let's say mm -hmm. board levels mm -hmm. or senior manager levels. Uh, how do you develop these uh, emotional intelligence traits? Yeah, it's, it's not easy. You really yeah. have to work on it. And as a matter of fact, as I said, leadership is taught. I mean, we've ourselves had a course on leadership um, uh, in, the, in the executive MBA program, but, but really leadership is taught, is partly taught on the job. And the second thing is, is, is you have to be, and that's the center of sort of my understanding of leadership, to be self-aware. Huh? So yeah. when you know that you are, you know, let's say it's at a certain level, you have to develop yourself a plan. You have to know what you want to reach, how to develop those soft skills. You have to be aware of it. Uh, and, and those soft skills are not easy to acquire and they take time, huh? yeah. you know, they involve things like active listening, they involve things like, um, you know, showing empathy towards the other people and, and they're very important and it takes time to build up. Huh? So you have to be able to reflect on how you behave because as, as you know, once you start growing the corporate ladder, there are other traits that I call them a bit more negative traits to leadership like, you know, egocentrism mm -hmm. and other things, people become more, you know, yeah. Sort full of, of themselves <laughs> full of themselves and yeah. indulged by the sort of the new sort of powers and accountabilities mm. they have and, and 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 you have to counterbalance this by by really working on your soft skills and you have to have a plan to do that mm. Mm. so uh, i have a question that just popped up um 
when I'm thinking about fixed mindsets and growth mindsets, like w when you're explaining how you can evolve uh, through the ladder and how you can uh, actually improve yourself when you are reflecting on your qualities, you can improve even your emotional intelligence qualities. But then there are people that are not doing that. And uh, I often think about how that quality that uh, got you here won't get you there and how in the corporate ladder sometimes it's like a Russian roulette when you put somebody on the next level is going to work out if, if he's with a fixed mindset maybe he was a superstar uh, a very talented person on the, the level that was Below, before yeah. and how, how you can um, address this uh, beforehand because I'm always thinking about my staff and the people that I work with uh, how can I uh, show growth mindset to them how can i work with them to to achieve something and show them that talent is it leads somewhere but then you have to build upon that and out of your experience how you can see uh, this uh, uh, change in people and how we can foster growth uh, in such people yeah no that's a good question and it's it's, it's not easy it's mm. not easy because sometimes when you reach a certain level let's say mid middle management level mm. you're thinking look i'm ready for the next big step you look i know all the hard stuff and and i and i'm working on soft skills i've taken this kind of courses i've mm. done this and that you know hr has helped me but that's mm. just not enough huh? mm. and sometimes you have to make that step and and then you see and you have to be always open to receive feedback that's what i said it yeah. boils down to the, the, the active listening part I, I mentioned earlier because you know a successful leader has at, at, at any level it has uh, let's say personal qualities that are quite important you know the charisma mm -hmm. you know the, the emotional intelligence all of that are personal qualities but there are other qualities that are also very important that has to do a with the job and i do believe and i've always for myself personally in each and every role i've been to uh, in it's been very important to know what I'm talking about. Because huh? you've mm. seen also too many leaders that are just, you know, I'm just trying to find the right Winging word. It. <laughs> yeah, they, they sort of, they believe that they, they know what they're talking about. They improvise a lot. They yeah. they like to delegate and to sort of play the big boss. I think that's that's never going to get you there. And of course, once you grow and you become, let's say, at, at a C-suit, you know, you, you won't know all the details. But at least, if you, even if you don't know, and I've had that, I've said, look, I don't know this, but let me take the time to go prepare, through it, to read yeah. it, prepare, and then I get back to you with, with a decision or let's have the discussion like in a week from now. And you really Perfect. need to know the, the, the groundwork. Mm. So I think mm. that that big difference between the operational level and top management level, you have to sort of bridge it, but there should be a foundation there. Right? Without yeah. it, I don't think you can be successful. Huh? Great, great. So, so I, I, um, I thought of uh, Jack Welch that said something very similar. You have to be able to go from the C-level suite and go to the operations to understand the process. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. hey guys, what is the problem? How we can <laughs> yeah, build upon that? Oh, that's a nice comparison. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I take it as a compliment. Very nice. Yeah. No, and the other thing is, I've, I've also read, you know, I've read books on leadership and I've, I've, I've watched leaders. It's, it's good to, to watch leaders. That's also, mm. I found it very inspiring from time to time. But I think the key uh, for being a successful leader is to stay authentic. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a there is a book we had on the NBA. You probably yeah. remember the the True North of yeah. Bill George. Mm -hmm. I read that book. I really liked it. It's, it's talking about authentic leadership, mm -hmm. and like you have to stay authentic to your own personal qualities. I think that's always a winning strategy. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't try to copy copycats. I don't think are successful. You can watch really really successful leaders. You know they're always the same examples that are being given. You know big big yeah, tech yeah. companies. You know the the sort of Steve Jobs yeah. and you know uh, Satya Nadella. All these kind of yeah. people. And and it's inspiring to watch. But be yourself. Be, stay true to yourself. Because mm. I because I think that's that it's really a winning strategy. So um, authentic leadership. I truly believe in uh, guys. Huh? So yeah. and you have to practice it. Huh? You have to practice <laughs> for it. sure. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, just to to uh, give a little a bit of um, uh, opinion uh, on authentic leadership I always know that uh, I have to work on my strengths to keep improving them but then I have to work on my weaknesses to support my strengths not to uh, give them the ultimate focus because this won't uh, make me authentic but just to 80 20 like 80% uh, of my time will go to my strengths but 20% will go to improve my weaknesses because otherwise I'm, I'm going to have blind spots and maybe the ego is a problem maybe too emotional maybe exactly. something else exactly yeah. cool no I, I agree with you that 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 as I mentioned earlier when we spoke about the leadership development plan sort mm. of it you can call it whatever but it's 
is the point that you are aware that you have to work on some points. Even yeah. the most successful leaders keep on working because leadership is not, it can be taught, as I said, but it's evolving. Huh? You, see, yeah. you see these days that uh, there are other qualities that are that are more important. We can talk about this, you know, inclusive leadership. How do you take people on board? Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, empower them? You know, how you take them on together so you can achieve the success together. That has changed a lot mm -hmm. over the last 20, 30 years. Huh? When, exactly. so moving away more from the authoritarian type of sort of I know yeah. it all and, you know, it's my, my word is what's gonna happen then to taking people on board and, you know, uh, making yeah, decisions yeah, hear, together with them. Hear diverse opinions and so on. Mm. Yeah, now let's let's switch the, the angle a bit. Uh, you have worked at many places and cultures and uh, we would like to, to ask you is there, in your opinion, of course, is there any difference and what is it between the Western and the more Eastern, the Russian culture in, in your particular case? And are there any nuances in itself in the Western culture that we shall be aware of? Um, yeah, and no, I've seen there are a lot of differences. Thank you for the question, Stephanie. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of differences and you and you have to be aware of that. As a matter of fact, um, bigger organizations that sent, um, I've been an expat for six years, mm -hmm. and um, bigger organizations normally when you really make a big jump from the West to the East, and then I, I spent uh, four years in Russia, but there are people that go to China, Japan, mm -hmm. you know, the Oriental far cultures, yeah. the Far East. Uh, you know, you take trainings in advance and they teach you what's about the culture, but this is, is nothing in comparison when you have your first meeting, like I did uh, when I went to the, to the company in, in, uh, in, in Moscow, and uh, I had a team of seven, eight people, of which only two spoke English. Huh? Whoa. <laughs> and, and, and then it's like, it's something so simple, you think about it, yeah, you know, probably because it's already a company with Western shareholders, and then yeah. suddenly you go, and in the first meeting, one of the, you know, my deputy had to translate for all the rest and now mm. try to make changes and do new stuff it's very difficult so so that's sort of your first head-on collision <laughs> with the different culture yeah. right? it's just language it's simple as that yeah, but it's very yeah, important yeah. Huh? it's so a superficial level the first a, it, it is it is it is and i think uh, especially uh, uh, in terms of leadership styles yes they're very different what i can say is i can compare let's say the netherlands where i spent mm -hmm. 11 years and then also uh, 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 Russia with uh, uh, you know when, when I was there and it, it is a different style uh, I think in, in in Russia and that's I'm talking about 10 years ago maybe it has changed since but there is much more of that authoritarian style that we used to know yeah. 20 30 years ago whereas you know the the, the, the leader or the sea level should have seen as um, you know high level executives they have to take the make the decisions the take final. the shots mm. uh, they they are accountable responsible and the rest are just you know bees working bees that are that yeah. are executing yeah. 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 so it's um in, i think the i don't know how it has evolved over the last let's say 10 years because i i haven't i haven't been there but um it was a big difference so it, it's a little bit shocking if you're not aware of that and you're looking to take people on board you have to spend time to teach them how to do that eh? because people are ready to execute tasks as I said, this is particularly the company I work for, maybe in different organizations is different, but what I've seen during my time there is indeed that. Uh, and you have to be aware, of it, you have to be prepared for that and to act upon it. Huh? Because if you want to take people on board when making decisions about things or building business plans or you know, presenting or anything, uh, you need to work with them to understand that this is something different, something new. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that the sort of inclusive type of leadership mm -hmm. is the one that I, I personally like, like most. Mm -hmm. uh, more than the, the the authoritarian one, which yeah. I've seen uh, in many occasions in, in Russia, not so much, let's say, in the Netherlands or in the Western world. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, Carl, I, I just, I just uh, wanted to ask uh, Thor something. Have you tried to implement an inclusive leadership style in, in the Russian area, in the authoritarian one? To some extent. <laughs> was, some it, extent. was it success? To some extent, yes. Some people don't like it and they simply say, I don't like it. Look, like, tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. You know? I need to follow, to follow orders. Uh, yeah, what is the, let's say, because I was in the, in the finance part, so tell me what I need to do. Okay, this is, let's say we were transforming balance sheets uh, mm. uh, uh, to, to IFRS. That's what we, for those who know finance, you know, yeah. from local gap to IFRS, we were doing this and then this lady in the team said, look, I don't, I don't want to know how we do it. You know, this is what I need to do. 
these are the differences so just check them are they okay yes no and then frame. you take it from there mm -hmm. and, and and you deal with it further i, I don't mm -hmm. need to go to present the results i'm, I'm not i don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. you know so yeah to some extent you have you have to you have to adopt uh, one way or the other uh, and, and take on board mm -hmm. the local culture and if it's not ready yet for that type of inclusive mm -hmm. leadership that we know more in the west then you, we, you know we don't have to push people because if you push them yeah. too much yeah. then it will be underperformance so people might leave that they'll say this is this yeah. is yeah know. empathy and emotional intelligence the key also even if <laughs> the, the leadership is authoritarian uh, <laughs> yeah. while we're on a, on a cultural topic um, we uh, one of our missions here is to really show how talented and how hardworking Bulgarian professionals are because we have uh, many people many watchers may don't realize it but in Bulgaria we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, multinational investors uh, and a lot of uh, great businesses that are done here uh, you have a very impressive career along the way and now you eventually return back uh, can you tell us both sides like what are the great strengths of, of bulgarians in in a professional uh, aspect and uh, what do we have to work on in your point point of view in your uh, experience internationally yeah thank you thank you Carl. yeah well i think it's a good topic and it's an important topic and the truth is no matter what happens around us that there are more and more people coming back which is great yeah. they're schooled more in the west and they come back and they bring that change with them you know to me the answer will be very simple it's just hard work huh? mm -hmm. i probably it's it's valid for any place huh? no matter where you sit hard work when i went there i really okay it was 20 years ago so times were different but you really have to prove yourself on a daily basis mm -hmm. and it, it's not easy huh? that's the, the first thing so it's hard work and the second thing is you really have to like what you're doing and i think then it is somebody was saying that you know then you, it seems like you haven't really worked so if you like what you're doing at the end of the day it doesn't really feel that heavy it doesn't yeah. feel that you have done yeah. some real job but yeah. but so these are the two i think my recipe is like that hard work especially at the beginning eh? because mm. you have to prove yourself especially if you are when if you come from the east box mm -hmm. to the west like it was 20 years ago i think the gap was really visible yeah. now it's obviously much less due to those foreign investors that came in here mm. they brought in that culture and mm. and you know it's a different generation eh? so the the millennials and, and so on probably some of the uh, listeners and viewers mm. so it is it is is a different time but but really the recipe is very simple it is hard work and you have to have it inside you eh? that that intrinsic motivation mm. i think it's it's very important for you to succeed eh? Yeah, it turns out we are quite uh, uh, similar to the working ideals of the West, and uh, somehow we tend to match up uh, on the on the culture level in the companies. Um, and, yeah, uh, you know that, and that hurt, working hard, it's it's also visible eh? because, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we cannot, we shouldn't generalize about people. There are different people everywhere these <laughs> days. You know, the global village people move around. It's it's much different than 20, 30 years ago. But mm -hmm. what 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 really what was appreciated back then and probably still is is that because of most of the time we are hard working. You know, we don't have the five to, uh, the nine to five mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, I've stayed to to work till late on projects, especially the first five years not that i don't work hard these days but i'm much more balanced you know i know yeah. but back then you're just maybe <laughs> inefficient yeah. back then you're sort of a hungry beaver and you have yeah, to you have to yeah. prove yourself or you work hard and most yeah. of the time you would work extra than some of your peers huh? because over there it's and it's, it's not good or bad is that's if you want to prove yourself and you and you want to grow this is the way yeah. to do it huh? mm, personal preference okay and while you are saying that um, how do you keep your drive like uh, you're also a family guy a very hard-working guy uh, for all the people that don't know it's very difficult to have an MBA while you're on the top management levels and having a family at the same time <laughs> so how do you keep your drive and yeah. continuously do uh, the amazing things that you do that's a, that's a good question I hope they are amazing so thanks for that <laughs> yes. but, um, for us, it is um, it's it's not easy I think again with with time that that famous work-life balance and we can talk about this in, in the whole series but the work-life yeah. balance is different for 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 each and every one of us mm. of course once you have a family and and then when the children come it is different yeah. and you have to you have to realize that and give enough time for that because I've seen different examples eh? I've seen examples where people continue to work very hard and then that definitely impacts your your private life eh? 
uh, it's also a conscious decision how to do it. You do become more efficient. You become more used to what you do. As, mm. uh, that's what I said. Huh? Leadership. I think leaders grow also with uh, with with age and with gaining that experience. Huh? Okay. I've seen it. I just allow me to 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 say something that might be interesting. Like yesterday, I saw a news about. Uh, another very famous leader you guys remember immediately that that has become the third person in the world that is uh, 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 has a net worth of more than 100 billion yeah. you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about yeah. right and you know i've seen interviews with with him and i think he's a brilliant guy with great ideas but is he really the the best leader you've seen mm. <laughs> you know so probably with time with some more reason not that i'm criticizing anything i'm just looking at different examples and different different mm. leaders so i i do believe what well, the point i was trying to make you can be really brilliant but then you still have to have a plan to work on things to become a, a really successful leader. Mm. And those things takes time. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you keep, go back on your question, how, how do you keep the drive? Well, you know, the, the problem that I have seen is that if you grow the corporate ladder quite fast, and I think I've seen most of, a lot of colleagues, let's say in the MBA and that have done that, you know, like, like quite continuous growth and you mm. reach, um, let's say a C-level suit at, at your mid thirties you sort of think like, okay, what's next? And that's a point of reckoning that that, it, that is quite important. It, it might lose you for some time. So what happened with me is basically I, I sort of left the corporate world for a, uh, for a year, year and a half and just did my own things, like mm. start up my own business, did, did, did some consulting outside of that. So a little bit break from that because you've, mm. in a way you've sort of seen it all. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that's, then it's, if you lose the drive, even at a at a more senior uh, management level, if you lose the drive, then you're not yeah. not that same leader. Because eh? mm. the leader also has to have new ideas. You have to be, you know, what we discussed earlier, visionary. You have to create new things. You have to be bold in things that you that you make and you do. You propose. You say, okay, let's do that. Let's launch this new product. Or you know, you have to come up with these ideas. If you don't have them, probably you're not really a very yeah. good leader. Eh? No, or you're not in the state of desire. So of if you lose that, you have to think of what to do to get it back, eh? to get that hunger back back yeah. in your system. In the West, they are incorporating it as sabbatical or something like that. But uh, I think uh, here we have to do it on our own. Yeah, you, you can do just something else. I've seen it in different, and there are different examples as well. So I've seen that. Of course, yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, quite dependent on on how soon you reach uh, your goals because uh, when when you say in the mid 30s uh, uh, you're in the c suite and, and so on it doesn't happen for everyone and uh, yeah of it course, of course yeah. Everyone, but it happens to to other people so i said if you have the you know the right qualities and the drive mm. i think the rest uh, the, the rest can be thought huh? so yeah, absolutely uh, so yeah, but work-life balance, just to, to add on a bit on that topic, is not easy. This is this yeah. is not easy. And as we've seen in the books, uh, and I've had also moments like that, uh, like a burnout, you've seen that, mm. the, the, you know, working, if you lose the work-life balance or you focus too much on your work, it, it might lead in cases to, to a burnout. And then that helps you to realize it's the, in that book again, I, we, we, we did the MBA to, uh, not too long ago, so I still remember the crucibles as they call mm, it, yeah. 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 that moment where you actually crash yeah. and then you, and then you realize it, then you slowly build up uh, mm. uh, back, back, uh, back uh, in your career. So we, we already had a, a whole episode on the topic and I think it's really important because now it's um, uh, more important than ever because the, the circumstances that we work in are different and w- when you have the, the situation in which your home because becomes your workplace like in the very moment <laughs> uh, in 2020, uh, then you have to be very self-conscious and very self-aware on what are you doing and how much you're burning and yeah. uh, uh, how to regain um, some of this right. strength, like how to fuel yourself up, how to rest, things like that. Yeah. So if you have like one advice you can give to, to people on, on dealing with, uh, with this uh, stress and f- uh, pushing back on burnout, what, what would we be? Um. I don't know if I can give you one advice, but, uh, uh, you know, make sure you have time on, on your own for yourself or for the family. And really, mm. it's not easy. Eh? It is not easy. But and I've, I've, I've done that. Eh? If, if some of my, uh, let's say, superiors are ever going to listen to that. Mm. I've had weeks uh, when, uh, let's say, I'll go on holiday, like when I was really, really like close to a burnout. Mm. And I simply switch off the phone and I just leave it uh, 
uh, you know, just telephone calls in case yeah. if there is an emergency. Mm-hmm. Normally, no, you know, going out the letter, you're part of crisis committees and, and yeah. you know, bodies like that where you have to be reachable. Mm-hmm. But then I don't read, uh, I don't read emails. Uh, emails. Mm-hmm. I, you don't see that sound that's mm-hmm. always email coming up and you have 100, 200 mm-hmm. emails. Can you look that, up this that keep on buzzing <laughs> you and eventually you just, you're tempted and you go on yeah. it. So you know, my advice would be, uh, take time uh, for your own, for mm. your hobby, for the family. Do something. Whatever. It's different for everyone. Unwind. Huh? It's, mm. it's very important. And 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 just to add on that, for example, uh, uh, in, in 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 the current employer, you have a two week compulsory uh, sort of holiday. So you have to go on a paid leave for two weeks at least. Mm-hmm. That are you know um, uh, back to, to back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're not allowed, uh, so there are IT controls to check that you're not entering the system, that you don't read emails, <laughs> and if they're very strict about it. And there is a reason behind it. Yeah, yeah, it's not just uh, so that you know, don't, you don't get yeah, that uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, allowance for, for, uh, for unused holidays, but it's mostly about you need the time to, to, to unwind. Huh? And I think that's sort of a concept that's more widely accepted, more in the West still. I think mm-hmm. less so in Bulgaria, or if you go further east, people say, what, two weeks of holiday, yeah. three weeks of holiday back to back <laughs> yeah. like what you're talking about I mean you okay. are out of work eh? yeah. but it, there is a concept behind that the three weeks that, is eh? the, the standard German holiday well you see so <laughs> it, it's like it, it's sea level as well and you're thinking mm. like what? but if you're a good leader eh? you one of the qualities to delegate eh? so you would have delegated you if, mm. if you are inclusive yeah. leader you would other people on the on the team would know and if something happens that would require your decision they'll be able to do it because you know you've kept them at the same level so they're well informed and they, they're able to take an informed decision even without you, you know? yeah, yeah, so. yeah definitely yeah and uh, I, I think it also relates to how well you think of your succession like in some companies they have succession plans and so on but uh, i think that every leader should uh, be responsible for his own succession like i don't want to go in a two-week holiday of course uh, as you said uh, you have to be reachable on the mobile uh, if something is very urgent but then um, i want i want to know that the people that are working with me uh, know the stuff and uh, can um, at least 80 percent of the decisions they can take, take on their own so yeah, I, I totally support you that uh, you have to be able to transfer uh, the things that uh, that you're doing. Yeah, when you know, when you're young, you think like, ah, it's okay, you know, another sleepless night, it's fine. Mm. Again, I'm coming back to the same thing with age and with family, and then when your private life takes a different mm. shape than than you know the sort of the more younger party only yeah. type <laughs> private life, then then things change, and that mm. is is, yeah. is, a, is a good time to sort of re reevaluate uh, some priorities. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, well, that that naturally leads us uh, to the next question, which we more or less have already discussed and uh, touched upon. But anyway, this is our signature question, so uh, <laughs> we have to fire, yeah. fire away. <laughs> what is what is your recipe for leadership growth? For leadership growth, yeah. Well, I, I, I probably said it already, but yeah, uh, it, it was uh, it was stay work. authentic to yourself. Yeah. That's one. Uh, and and then to your own qualities and then the other thing is you know you hard work you have to know what you're talking about mm. I you know I, I've, I've seen leaders that are I have examples of people that just believe they're really good leaders but it's, it's just the leadership is not enough huh? mm. you have to know what you're talking about the, the, the stuff behind Conf- so, confidence doesn't equal competence yeah, that's mm. that's true that's true so uh, you know as, as a and I said use this again and you have to have a plan so mm-hmm. these are these are let's say it became not just one, but you have to have a plan in place for yourself, yeah. the leadership development plan or whatever you call it. That that boils down to the to that self awareness. So you know these mm-hmm. sort of keywords. You know that stay authentic to yourself, but have a plan on on how to deal with your weaknesses. You can yeah. even the best leaders will have uh, things to to work on. Mm-hmm. Also because we're not working in a static environment, things change. Eh? Mm. Like I have a friend of mine who is now just starting a, a as a new GM position, as a matter mm-hmm. of fact, and. And from a distance, eh? he has about 150 people in subordination with direct reports and everything, and he hasn't met them. <laughs> you know, so it's a completely new situation. So it's it's yeah. a new situation. Yeah, it is triggered by by the whole COVID-19 developments, yeah. but even so, you, you you have to remain agile. Eh? And, you have to and find then, a way. Yeah. And then suddenly you think you're really the best leader, but actually you don't have the quality. So what do you do with this? So I'm very curious <laughs> if if I knew how he's. I hope he'll he'll do he'll do great. But right, yeah. it's a it's 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 a it's a challenging time, and you have to be prepared for that. And then if you have a plan on how to deal with it, probably you deal Absolutely. with it well. So you need to have the yeah. plan. 
and yeah. uh, how the whole thing goes if it's not ske- scheduled it won't happen <laughs> so uh, you have to schedule your plan and uh, try to to uh, move along the way with the milestones and so on great great uh, interview today uh, so i will wrap up our meeting um, i want to thank you again todor for coming and for participating i'm sure that this is not the last time that we uh, talk uh, together on the yeah. show um so for today's episode uh, the key moments were how we can move along the corporate ladder uh, evolving and not staying on the same place how we can uh, stay true to our strengths and uh, how important hard work is i want to thank you all for listening and for watching don't forget to subscribe and uh, to share our content uh, lots to come bye see you next time thank you guys bye bye thank you Thor. bye